when I started this, I talked about, well, what happens when you've got an idea? So if your company or you see that you've got an existing profile that is already adopted, that matches your use case, or you look at the profiles and go, hey, I could build a product better than anybody else building this product, then it's very simple. You join the SIG, you download the specification. Actually, you don't have to do it in that order. You can download the specification and then join the SIG, but you know, we'd prefer you to join the SIG first, quite frankly. You find some other partners. Uh, you know, If you want to buy a chip, you want to drive some software drivers, you want to buy some application stacks, then you, you build an ecosystem of companies and then you ship the product. Very, very simple. If you don't see a profile in that list of adopted profiles, then what do you do? Well, that's actually the more interesting one to tell you about because first of all, you need to work out what is going on in the Bluetooth SIG. And when you join the Bluetooth SIG, you can see the list of working groups that there are and what they are chartered to do. So that's the first step that you can do. You can also look at something called the new work proposals. So there's a, a page on the website that lists all the new work proposals. A new work proposal is a way of getting work started in the Bluetooth SIG. You just say, this is what I'm trying to do. As long as three other companies support you, then you can create a study group and start working on that specification. Another one, of course, is that you can do something proprietary. If you want to, for example, build a cactus water level, so not just a plant pot water level, but something really specific like a cactus water level. You know, cacti have a completely different type of soil that they need to be grown in, and the normal water level detectors for normal plants don't work with cacti. So let's have a cacti water level profile. Well, if you're the only company that wants to do that, what you do is you use one of these UUIDs, 128-bit UUID, and build an SDP record or you build an attribute protocol uh, set of attributes for your device and you define your own proprietary extensions. Now, you may use existing characteristics, but one of the options you have is to do something completely utterly proprietary, and that's perfectly allowed. So for example, back in the Consumer Electronics Show back in Las Vegas at the beginning of this year, there was a keynote by uh, Mary from Microsoft Research entitled Effective Computing. It featured proprietary Bluetooth sensors that measured things like skin condu uh, conductance. In other words, how stressed are you? And some of the examples for this were that when people are under stress, they eat too much. And of course, healthcare costs are one of the biggest costs apart from wages that employees have. So if you've got somebody who's really stressed and eating too much, then that may affect their healthcare bills and therefore actually you want to make them less stressed and therefore by monitoring how stressed they are, you can help them manage that. The other problem, of course, is that middle managers don't normally make good decisions when they're stressed. You know, if you go to a middle manager and say, make a decision now, I need a decision in the next two seconds. No, oh, you haven't given me a decision. It, it doesn't get a good decision. I can tell you that now. I tried it the other day. It wasn't a good decision. So if you got these proprietary services, then you can come along, create these really interesting applications. Of course, if there's other people who would like to do the same sort of thing, then yeah, go ahead create a standard Bluetooth profile. But if it is something that is fairly unique and nobody else is doing this, then you can go off and create your own proprietary specifications.